A criminal tries to rob a lonely elderly woman's farm in the dead of night. But what he didn't anticipate was that she had a rather unusual pet guarding the residence. Two rough-looking men stood in front of a small farmhouse, surrounded by a high wall and thick vegetation that stood out amidst the landscape. One of the men, Carl, around 30 years old, with a history of crimes and scams, wore a confident smile. He looked over at his partner, Ralph, and pointed toward the property. This is it, man. Our lucky break is waiting in that farmhouse. After this, I'll finally be able to retire from the crime world. Ralph, younger and equally wrapped up in criminal activities, furrowed his brow with skepticism. He'd been part of a few thefts with Carl before, but something about this plan left him hesitant. To him, the place just looked like a simple country home without anything of great value. But who lives there, Carl? It just looks like an old farmhouse, Ralph murmured, still doubtful. Carl grinned, feeling proud of the intel he had gathered. You're mistaken, my friend. The only one who lives there is an elderly lady, Mrs. Connie. The criminal paused, watching Ralph's face as he added conspiratorially. She's the widow of one of the biggest shareholders of the country's most famous bank. You know what that means? It means all that fortune is with her now. Ralph raised his eyebrows, still not entirely convinced. Doesn't make sense, Carl. If this old lady is so rich, why is she living on a farm like this? Sure, it's a big property, but it's isolated, far from the city and near the woods. And look, there's not even an electric fence for protection. Carl, growing impatient, continued with his explanation. That's where you're wrong. She was never interested in her husband's money, always more into environmental causes. This place is full of trees and plants because she likes being close to nature. But I checked it out, Ralph. Inside, there are jewels, expensive paintings, gold items, and even a good stash of cash. Ralph still looked uncertain. How could there be so much inside with no security? Man, I don't know. This sounds too good to be true. And if the old lady really has all that, why wouldn't she hire security or at least put up an electric fence? Carl flashed a sly smile. She's smart. Wants everyone to think she's just a simple old woman, but I know what's in there. I've heard enough to know we can make a good haul. So, are you in or not? Ralph pondered, hesitating. But the temptation of an easy fortune finally won him over. With a firm handshake, he confirmed his participation. All right, let's do this. But listen, I don't want to harm the old lady. No violence. I don't get into that kind of thing. Carl smiled, reassuring his partner. Relax. At most, we'll just tie her up to make sure she doesn't call the police. The plan is to grab what we want and get out. They scheduled the robbery for the following Saturday night. Carl explained that on weekends, all the staff left and Mrs. Connie would be completely alone with no one around to protect her. While the criminals were planning their heist, inside the farmhouse in the main kitchen, Mrs. Connie was preparing an aromatic tea, chatting cheerfully with Pamela, her loyal housekeeper. Pamela, a middle-aged woman who had worked for the elderly lady for years, voiced her concerns. Mrs. Connie, you stay here all alone on weekends. Have you thought about hiring someone to keep an eye on the place? It would be safer. Mrs. Connie let out a gentle laugh, shaking her head in appreciation of her employee's concern. Oh, Pamela, I enjoy the peace and quiet. I spend all week with a full house and these peaceful days are my moments to connect with nature. At nearly 70 years old, Mrs. Connie maintained a calm and independent lifestyle. After her husband's passing, she remained true to her values, caring for the farm with a love for the land and the trees surrounding the place. Her only son lived abroad, managing the family business, and always insisted she reinforce her security, but she was adamant. I know my son wants me to install an electric fence or hire a guard, but this place is my haven. I'd rather have silence and greenery around me and trimming the little plants that grow on top of the wall would be such a shame. Pamela sighed, admiring her employer's courage and serenity, though she couldn't help but worry. If you think it's best, but remember, if you need anything, just call me. That way you won't be completely alone. Mrs. Connie gave a mysterious smile and remarked as she stirred her tea. I may be alone, but not entirely, my dear. I have my faithful companion cuddles my kitty to keep me company. Pamela widened her eyes well aware of the companion Mrs. Connie was referring to. She took a deep breath, trying to hide her astonishment, but couldn't help commenting. Mrs. Connie, forgive me, but you know Cuddles isn't exactly a kitty, right? Mrs. Connie chuckled softly, 
her eyes shining with a mix of affection and mystery. Oh, Pamela, it depends on how you look at it, doesn't it? Cuddles is very gentle with me, always has been. I'm sure he takes very good care of the house. Pamela shook her head, both impressed and concerned, but decided to drop the subject. She knew Mrs. Connie had full confidence in her kitty, even if he was far more than he appeared. The week flew by and the weekend arrived. On Friday night, as Pamela was preparing to leave, she made sure to remind her employer that if she needed anything, she just had to call and she'd come immediately. Mrs. Connie smiled as serene as ever and repeated that there was no need to worry. Are you sure, Mrs. Connie? You know you just have to call and I'll be here in no time. Pamela insisted with the tone of someone who was familiar with her employer's gentle refusals. The elderly lady only smiled serenely, shaking her head. Don't worry, Pamela. Soon I'll let Cuddles roam around the yard. He always lets me know if there's anything unusual around here. Pamela nodded, knowing full well what that kitty meant. She left the farmhouse with a calm heart, trusting in the peculiar security of the home. As soon as Pamela left, Mrs. Connie walked to the back of the house and opened the gate that enclosed the area where Cuddles stayed. The kitty immediately slinked out into the yard, disappearing into the vegetation with silent steps. With that done, Mrs. Connie returned inside and went straight to the library. In one corner, she pulled a specific book from the shelf, revealing a secret passage cleverly hidden behind the bookcase. And so, she entered a hidden room. The space was decorated like a sanctuary, where ancient relics, jewels, famous paintings, and golden artifacts gleamed on the shelves. A true treasure trove, carefully hidden and unknown even to her staff. As she walked through the room, Mrs. Connie murmured to herself, One day I'll have to decide what to do with all of this. Her late husband's fortune was a well-guarded secret. While he was alive, he proudly displayed the items in their luxurious mansion in the city. But Connie had always been reserved. After her husband's death, she sold the mansion and retreated to the farm, choosing a simple and discreet life. Her employees knew she had inherited shares in her late husband's bank, but they had no idea that Mrs. Connie was, in fact, a billionaire, owning nearly 80% of the bank. However, despite all her precautions, Carl, the thief, had uncovered the secret and was preparing to invade the property, planning to make the elderly woman his victim. When Saturday arrived, Mrs. Connie was calm, spending the evening reading. Seated in her rocking chair in the living room, she was absorbed in Romeo and Juliet, her favorite classic romance, while the house door remained open. The fresh night breeze brought the sounds of birds, cicadas, and crickets, and the faint padding of cuddles, who was now freely wandering the yard. Outside, Carl and Ralph were getting ready. They put on masks and carried a ladder to a section of the wall bordering the forest. Before climbing, Ralph hesitated, casting a worried glance at his partner. My grandma always used to say, if the deal seems too good, be suspicious. What if there's something off about this place? Carl rolled his eyes and responded, impatient. Don't be a coward, man. I checked everything. All the employees are gone. It's just the old lady with no one to protect her. He signaled his partner to proceed, insisting they be as quiet as possible. Don't mess this up, Ralph. If she realizes we're here before we get inside, she might lock herself in a room and call the police. The two jumped over the wall, landing softly on the lawn. Carl turned on a small flashlight, and both began moving cautiously, stepping as lightly as possible to avoid any noise. As they illuminated the path ahead, Ralph noticed something that made him shiver instantly. There were tracks in the dirt, large paw prints, as if from some animal. They resembled cat prints, but were much larger. Carl, look at this, Ralph whispered, his voice tinged with tension. These tracks, they look like a cat's, but they're enormous. Carl, however, shook his head, brushing off his partner's fear. Stop being paranoid. The most dangerous animal we'll find here is probably a chicken, he said with a sarcastic smile. They continued advancing cautiously, but then in the silence of the night, they heard a deep rumble, a sound that seemed to come from a sleeping animal. It was unlike anything they had ever heard before, as if it belonged to something large and powerful. Ralph felt his heartbeat quicken, his palms growing sweaty. Carl, trying to hide his own unease, muttered, That must have come from the forest. 
Trust me, there's nothing here to worry about. Let's just grab what we came for and get out of here. The two continued on, reaching the entrance of the house. The door was open and from a distance, they spotted Mrs. Connie sitting with her back to them in the rocking chair, completely absorbed in her book. Carl smirked confidently. The old lady's so clueless she didn't even lock the door. This is going to be easy. They crept into the living room in silence. Carl held a gun, and as they approached, he aimed it at Mrs. Connie, who seemed completely unaware of their presence. Then, he took a step forward and spoke in a firm voice. Stay quiet, ma'am. We don't want to hurt anyone. The elderly woman raised her gaze toward the two men, feigning a momentary surprise, but her expression quickly shifted. She looked at them with an unsettling calm, almost as if she were not intimidated at all by these two masked figures. Ralph noticed the change and whispered to Carl. Carl, this feels strange. She doesn't even seem scared. Carl, attempting to maintain control, ignored his partner's comment. Listen up, lady. We know what's here. Either you cooperate or things will get messy for you. But Mrs. Connie simply folded her hands in her lap and observed them calmly, as though judging two disobedient children. She cast a glance toward the yard, as if expecting something, and then spoke with a firm, serene voice. You have no idea what you're doing. I suggest you leave the house while you still can. Carl laughed, amused by the elderly woman's apparent threat. Oh, really, ma'am? Who do you think you are? Wonder Woman of the senior set? At that moment, a low, almost growling sound echoed from the yard. Ralph, wide-eyed, looked toward the slightly open door, where the sound seemed to be coming from. Carl, did you hear that? Mrs. Connie, still seated in her rocking chair, offered a slight smile and added, as if giving one last warning. Oh, I did tell Pamela I'd let Cuddles out tonight. He doesn't like uninvited guests. Carl snorted, annoyed, while Ralph felt a chill run down his spine. He didn't know exactly what or who Cuddles was, but he had the distinct feeling that discovering the answer could be his last experience. Still trying to comprehend the old woman's eerie calm, Ralph asked, intrigued. So who exactly is this Cuddles? Mrs. Connie kept her serene smile and replied calmly. Oh, just my pet kitty. Carl let out a mocking laugh. So that's what's supposed to scare us? A little kitty? He sneered, pointing the gun back at her and adding in a threatening tone. Enough games, old lady. Hand over what I want or you won't see the sunrise. Ralph, however, was still unsettled. That growl they'd heard earlier? What had it been? He looked over at Carl, already nervous, and questioned him. And that sound, man? You heard it, right? You think it was just some animal in the woods? Carl, irritated, brushed off his partner's unease. Shut up and focus on why we're here, Ralph. Stop imagining things, damn it. Mrs. Connie then stood up slowly despite the gun pointed at her. With a disarming tranquility, she said, All right. If you're so eager to see my treasure, I'll show you. She walked toward the library, followed closely by the two thieves. They watched as the elderly woman placed her Romeo and Juliet book back on the shelf. With a soft click, a secret passage revealed itself, leading into a hidden room. Before they entered, she made sure to add with a slight smile. Just don't mind the mess. Since no one else comes in here, things are a bit out of order. Carl scoffed. You think I care about cleanliness, old lady? I just want the fortune. Show me what you hold most precious. Ralph, on the other hand, couldn't ignore the woman's demeanor. Her light laugh, her calm words, everything about her contradicted someone who felt threatened, someone about to lose a fortune in mere minutes. And as for that growl, why had she warned them to leave while they still could? Something wasn't adding up, but for now, he chose to ignore his intuition. The next instant, the two men stepped into the hidden room, and there, before their eyes, lay the fortune they had hoped for. Rare jewels, paintings by renowned artists, golden chalices, precious stones gleaming under the dim yellow light. Each piece there could be worth millions, and they were both dazzled by the sight. Carl broke into a triumphant smile, satisfied to finally see the wealth he had dreamed of. See, man, didn't I tell you we'd find our golden ticket here? All of this right in front of us. We're filthy rich. Ralph, still in awe, touched the items as if needing to confirm their reality. The elderly lady observed the admiration on the thieves' faces and, in a casual tone, remarked, So, gentlemen, is there a particular piece you're fond of? 
she said, clearly amused by their surprise. Then, with an eerie nonchalance, she added, Now that you've seen everything, you may leave in peace, or if you'd like, you can stay for some tea. I make a wonderful tea. You should try it. The comment made Carl furious, and he raised his gun, losing patience. Enough of your games, you crazy old lady. We're taking everything, every last penny you have. And actually... He moved closer, sizing her up. Maybe it's better if I just get rid of you. Ralph stepped between him and the elderly woman, trying to prevent the worst. Carl, we agreed not to hurt anyone. I don't do that kind of thing. We take enough to get rich and get out of here. That's more than enough. But the leader, overcome by greed, shoved his partner aside and snarled, I don't just want a little. I want it all. Everything here is mine now. The two began arguing right there, each trying to get their way. Mrs. Connie, for her part, watched the scene in silence, as if everything were under control. At a moment, when both were distracted, she discreetly picked up a small bell from a nearby table and rang it, producing a clear, delicate sound. The tinkling stopped their argument for a moment, and both turned toward the elderly woman. Carl narrowed his eyes, confused. What the hell is that bell for? Mrs. Connie, still smiling serenely, responded, Oh, I really don't like fighting, so I thought it best to call Cuddles and my kitty to handle this situation. Carl and Ralph fell silent, puzzled. But from down the hallway, the sound of firm, heavy footsteps began to echo. Each step grew louder, and Ralph's expression transformed into sheer terror as he noticed the elderly woman's calm gaze. Suddenly, he understood that Cuddles was not the kitty he had imagined. The footsteps grew closer until, standing before them, appeared a massive tiger with golden fur and a piercing gaze. The creature stared directly at them, blocking the only way out of the room. Both men let out screams of terror upon seeing the enormous tiger blocking the doorway. Cuddles emitted a fierce roar, and Carl, acting reflexively, aimed the gun away from Mrs. Connie and toward the animal. But before he had a chance to fire, the tiger lunged, and with a single swipe of its paw, sent the revolver flying across the room. Carl made a motion to retrieve it, but Mrs. Connie intervened, speaking calmly. Don't even think about moving, dear. Any sudden move and Cuddles will make you his dinner. The elderly woman calmly approached the tiger and began to stroke its head, while the animal kept its gaze fixed on the thieves. With a slight smile, she asked, So do you like my kitty? Carl, trembling, begged the elderly woman to call off the tiger, but she only laughed. But didn't you two want to see my fortune? Well, here it is. Cuddles, he's my greatest treasure, my kitty. Mrs. Connie continued, recounting with surprising calm how she had met Cuddles years earlier during a trip to the African savanna where she found the injured cub. With no chance of surviving alone in the wild, she decided to rescue him. After obtaining special legal permission to raise the animal in Brazil, she bought the farm, which became the ideal home for the tiger to roam and play freely. During the week, Cuddles was confined to the back of the house because of the staff, but at night and on weekends, she let him patrol the yard. Ralph, still terrified, asked in a shaky voice. So, so he's tame? With me, yes. Connie replied with an enigmatic smile. With others, not so much. You can imagine why I don't keep staff here on weekends. She then snapped her fingers playfully and commented. One signal and Cuddles does exactly what I want. Turning to Carl, she ordered. There's a rope in the corner. Use it to tie your friend to that piece of furniture. The thug, terrified and left with no choice, obeyed her orders, hesitating with each movement. Every time he seemed about to try something, the tiger would growl, freezing him in place. After tying up his partner, he shot a desperate look at the elderly woman. Ralph, anxious and afraid, asked, What are you going to do with us? Connie replied in her calm voice. Well, if you behave, I'll just call the police, but first I need to make sure you don't try anything funny. Carl, suspicious, asked, And who's going to tie me up? You? Connie picked up the gun from the floor and examined it for a few moments before handing it back to Carl. Here you go. And keep it pointed at the ground, will you? Because if you try anything, Cuddles will be at your throat before you pull the trigger. Carl, unsure what to do, kept the gun aimed at the floor. Connie gave one last order with a cold smile. Now aim at your foot and pull the trigger. That way you won't be able to run. Carl began trembling, calling her crazy. This is insane. I'm not going to do that. 
Oh, I think you will, Connie replied as Cuddles growled menacingly. Carl, sweating profusely, hesitated, his gun pointing at his own foot. In a final act of desperation, he leapt up and sprinted toward the exit, trying to escape the room as fast as he could. Connie didn't move. She simply commanded in a firm voice. Cuddles, fetch! The tiger darted after the fleeing criminal, who raced frantically toward the exit. In a panic, as the massive creature closed in, Carl raised the gun and tried to fire, but nothing happened. He pulled the trigger again, to no avail, and terror flooded over him as he realized the revolver was unloaded. From a distance, Mrs. Connie chuckled, holding up the bullets in her hand. Did you really think I'd hand you a loaded gun? That order was just a little joke to scare you a bit more, you fool. Before handing over the gun, Connie had discreetly removed the bullets, rendering Carl's last line of defense useless against the tiger, which now reached him. With precision, the tiger clamped down on Carl's leg, dragging him back toward the secret room. The thief screamed in pain, cursing Mrs. Connie as a damn old hag, but she only smiled and closed the hidden passage with a mocking remark. The fortune is all yours uh, for a little while until the police arrive. Connie then secured cuddles in his enclosure at the back and called the police, who arrived shortly afterwards. The thieves left the farm utterly defeated, with Ralph grumbling that it was all Carl's fault. Carl, however, was taken to the hospital first, where he had to get a few stitches in his leg before heading to face his years in prison. After the incident, the story of Mrs. Connie and her kitty quickly spread, but she decided to move her treasures to a secure location outside the farm. Thus, Mrs. Connie and Cuddles returned to their peaceful life, far from prying eyes. After all, no one wanted to be the next to play with the kitty. And if you liked this story, the next video appearing on your screen will surely move too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. A big hug, and see you in the next heartwarming story.